Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video I want to talk about my experience heating my home with a low boiler temperature as I continue on my journey preparing to get an air source heat pump. So what is low temperature heating and why am I messing around with it? Well, low temperature heating is when you keep the water in your heating system under around 55 degrees. Low temperature heating has many benefits, such as improved boiler performance, less wear and tear on the system, no clanking and banging when it starts up, and you won't burn your hand when you touch the radiator, which can be especially useful if you have small children. As to why I'm messing around with it, there are two main reasons. First, by using a low flow temperature, my boiler will always operate in condensing mode, which will push its efficiency up, meaning I use less gas when I'm heating my house. Second, I want to get an air source heat pump, and a heat pump's performance is related to the temperature of the water coming out of it, so the flow temperature. The hotter it needs to make that water, the harder the heat pump has to work, which means it will use more energy, i.e. electricity. Essentially, you'll have a more efficient heat pump at a lower flow temperature. The obvious question for me then was whether a low flow temperature would actually keep my house warm. So by running with a low flow temperature, I'll certainly improve my boiler's efficiency, which is good for my pocket, and I'll answer that question. Let's start by looking at how the low flow temperature impacts my boiler's performance. I'm lucky enough to have a heat meter connected to my boiler, so I can measure the heat output very, very accurately. I've done a video on my heat meter's installation and its behavior, and you can check that out if you want to find out more. I also gather other bits of information directly from the boiler using an EMS gateway. If you want to find out more, I've done a video on that too. In March of this year, I started sending all of that data up to the Open Energy Monitor platform, and that's been recording and calculating my boiler's performance since then. Let's jump over to that now, and we can dive into some of the, the details of my boiler's performance. This is the OEM dashboard, and I'll include a link in the description to my particular dashboard for my big stupid oversized boiler. So you can see on the dashboard that it's recording the fuel used, whether it's doing a hot water run or a central heating run, the target temperatures, the flow temperatures, the outside temperature and the room temperature. So it's recording and logging everything you need to work out the boiler's efficiency. And if you can see down here at the very bottom, my boiler's efficiency is currently at 88% since it was installed in March. Now, I'm using something called Priority Domestic Hot Water, which allows my boiler to run at two different flow temperatures. I'll talk about the importance of that later on, but for now, I want to compare the difference in efficiency between a hot water run, when the boiler's heating the water to 70, and the central heating run, when it's heating the water to 32. So what I've got open in front of me is a hot water run from the 17th of October, when we just had to top up the, the tank for the kids to have a shower. And you can see the red line here, which is the flow temperature. So when we switch on the heating, it'll bring the flow temperature up to around 70, and it'll heat the water for a while. You can see there's a pretty steady uh, DT between the flow and return. And then once the tank has decided it has enough, it simply switches off. Now the blue shaded area here indicates that this is actually a hot water run. So OEM again can tell the difference between a hot water run and a central heating run. The figure I want to bring your attention to is down here in the corner. And this is the efficiency in the window. So it's looking at the, you know, the run between 10 to 6 and 7 o'clock and it's telling me that the efficiency is merely 68%. So that's not very good at all. Now, if we hop over to a central heating run, this is, when was this? So this is the 20th of October. So the heating came on at about 6.50 in the morning and ran for 20 odd minutes. 
um, until it's cycled. But again, if you look down here in the corner, you'll see the efficiency now is actually 94.2%. So we're on the way to sort of 95. With condensing boilers, I think kind of 95, 96 is, is probably as good as, it, as good as it can get. Now my boiler being oversized will cycle. So you can see here that the target flow temperature I want is 32 and the best it manages is nearly 34 because the, the, the system is just not able to take the heat out and it can't modulate any lower than six kilowatts roughly. So it'll run like that until the flow temperature rises and then essentially the hysteresis point which is six degrees above the set point will turn the boil will turn the, the flame off the pump will continue to run uh, and that will cause the temperatures to drop which you can see after that but aside from its oversized nature and the fact that it was cycling you can still see that the performance in that window is 25 percent more than it was at 70. so there's a huge gap in the overall performance so low temperatures here really do highlight how efficient your boiler can be when it's condensing versus not condensing as mentioned the second reason for experimenting with the low flow temperatures was to see if a heat pump using low flow temperatures could keep my home warm i've instrumented my home like my boiler so I can track the temperature of the entire house and the individual rooms across the course of a day. All of that telemetry goes into Home Assistant, but I ultimately use something called InfluxDB to log all that telemetry as it just gives me a nice interface for drilling into it. So let's hop over to the InfluxDB Data Explorer and we're going to look at two different time periods. So on this graph here, we have three different measurements. We have the boiler's flow temperature, we have the average internal temperature of the house, and we have the external temperature. Now the blue line represents the average internal temperature, and as you can see, that stays pretty much around 20. It fluctuates up and down a little, but it's pretty much been at 20 for the past 30 days, which you can see here. And the outdoor temperature has moved between Probably five, I think was the lowest. Oh, it's actually got a bit lower there. That was down to two and a half. So we haven't gotten below freezing yet, but it's only October. But you can see that even with the fluctuating outside temperature, the, the house itself has stayed pretty steady. Now the line at the top here, this represents the flow temperature of the boiler. So this is going to go up and down for two reasons. First reason is when we're doing hot water runs, it will naturally climb up to 70 and you can see those peaks all the way along. And the other one is to do with the cycling of the boiler. Now the figure here is the actual flow temperature, not the set point, as I don't actually have a sensor, uh, unfortunately, for the set point. But you can see some of these runs where it's ran pretty steadily, but pretty much we're hovering around this kind of median line here. And that's because I've set the boiler's flow temperature to 32. So it is going to go up and down as the boiler itself cycles. And I, I mentioned that earlier in the video, just due to the size of the boiler, it always overshoots the target and then it'll drop and then it will overshoot the target again and then it will drop. But it's hovering around that kind of set point. So with that and with those, those kind of temperatures, it's had no problem keeping the house nice and warm. If we now look at a different time period, so this is going back from the 1st of December 2023 to the end of January 24, the picture again is pretty much the same, but the temperatures themselves are consistently a lot lower. So at the beginning of December here, we drop down to minus two and a half. And you can see the boiler's flow temperature was hovering around 40, which is what I'd set it to back then. 
I've gone a bit lower now, but that's what it was when I started experimenting with this last winter. And again, the house stays in or around sort of 19. And that's pretty consistent even with the temperatures down below 10. Uh, we do have another cross into negative temperatures up here. And this is when it got down to minus five. And you can see a little dip in the internal temperature. But again, it climbs back up as the flow temperature. I probably was tinkering with the flow temperature manually, I think back then. But again, absolutely no problems. Yeah, the internal temperature got down to 18, which is a little bit colder than we're used to, but nothing crazy, especially given that it was, you know, minus, basically minus five outside at that point. And the flow temperature, even at 45, pulled the house's temperature back up to 20. So absolutely no problems there. However, that's not the whole story. One of the consequences of lowering the flow temperature is that the individual radiators themselves won't output as much heat as they did. And that can lead to some rooms being colder than others, depending on the size of the original radiator that was put in. So whilst the average temperature stayed where I wanted to be with the existing radiators in the house, I also track the temperature of the coldest room in the house. And if I switch that on, it paints a slightly different picture. So now we have a temperature and it's actually three to four degrees lower than the average temperature. And in some cases it gets quite bad. I think down here we're down to 15, 16, and down here we're actually, the temperature gets down to 14. Now the internal temperature is actually 16, but there is quite a difference. And I know which room that is. That's my bathroom. Now my bathroom is the coldest room in the house for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's over the garage. Number two, I couldn't get cavity wall insulation added to the bathroom because the cavity was too small. And number three, it has a beautiful designer tile rail which puts out as much heat as a candle. If I now bring my bathroom into the view, you can see it's nearly a perfect overlap as it's usually the coldest room in the house. So whilst the majority of the rooms will stay nice and toasty, the bathroom is an outlier and it will need a significant radiator upgrade in order to make sure that it, the room is warm. I've since insulated the ceiling of the garage just to improve the overall insulation level of the room, but the radiator needs a significant upgrade regardless. So based on that data and radiator upgrades aside, I'm very confident that a low flow temperature will keep the house nice and warm, even when it gets down to minus five. In summary, improved boiler efficiency and the house is still warm. This winter, I hope to experiment further and I want to push the flow temperature down as low as it can go once the outside weather gets cold enough that my boiler isn't cycling like crazy. You may have noticed from the influx DB data that I'm currently running at a flow temperature of 32, and that's been perfectly adequate during this milder weather, which has been between sort of five and 15. Hopefully, after all that, you're now wondering if you may be able to benefit from a lower flow temperature. Perhaps some of the numbers I've shown will give you some confidence to give it a try. But before you run to your boiler and start twiddling dials, there's a couple of considerations. If you have a separate hot water tank, like me, odds are you probably can't adjust the flow temperature on your boiler. This is because you will need a high flow temperature in order to heat the water. You can't get water to 55 degrees if your flow temperature is only 45 degrees. 
That's not to say your system can't do it, but you would need to check the plumbing and you would need to check your boiler to see if the priority domestic hot water setup was applicable. If you have a combi boiler, you can absolutely adjust the temperatures independently since there are usually two temperature controls. I'll post the link in the description to an excellent article on the heating hub, which has a guide to take you through lowering the flow temperature. Obviously, if you do lower the temperature down and you find that you're too cold, you can simply turn it back up. And if nothing else, it will have given you an idea of how low you can make the flow temperature based on the weather outside. Hopefully, this may even save you a few pound on your gas bill. And if you are considering going for a heat pump, it'll help give you some confidence that a low flow temperature is nothing to be scared about. I'll wrap up there. If you've any questions, as ever, please put them in the comments. I'm always happy to try and help. If you've enjoyed this video, please press that like button as that will help with the algorithm. Otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom, and thanks for watching.